He is a righteous God, merciful God, and I love Him. Amen. He gives us opportunities every day. Yes. Every day to serve Him. Y'all turn in your Bibles this morning to the book of Matthew, chapter 15. We're going to start in verse 21. Lord had a message of help on me all week. He gave me a song. I was going to sing it, but I hadn't had a chance to write it all down. <laughs> Probably a good thing. Sing what you know. <laughs> well, it's different every time I sing it. <laughs> but you know, as oftentimes we cry out for help, we always asking for help. You know, there's times in our lives where, you know, physically we need help, mentally we need help, spiritually we need help. But this woman here in verse, chapter 15, verse 21, we're going to read, she was a Canaanite woman, a Gentile, who had a daughter that was sick, possessed with the devil. And we're going to go over... What, her, what happened with her when she came in contact with Jesus Christ. Verse 21 says, Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. This is north of Mount Carmel. He was getting out from away from the Pharisees for a little while. He'd had his plate full, I believe, and he was trying to get away. And he had went up into the land of the Gentiles is where he was headed. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. She come out, she said, she said Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. She knew who he was. But what did Christ do? Verse 23, But he answered her not a word. Boy, that sounds a little different than what we typically hear, doesn't it? She cried out, said, Oh, Lord, thou son of David. He answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cried after us. They said, Lord, would you please send her away? She keeps following us around. She keeps crying, crying out to you. Just send her away. And what did Christ say? He didn't send her away. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Basically he was saying, I'm sent for the lost house of Israel, not you. He was trying her. Then came she and worshipped him saying, Lord, help me. Then came she and worshipped him. He said, I didn't come for you. I came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But then she came and worshipped him saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. It's not meat for me to take the children's bread and cast. It's not meat for me to take their bread, the lost sheep of the, of the house of Israel, and, and cast it to dogs as she's laying at his feet, worshiping him. But she said, Truth, Lord. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. You see, she came crying out to Jesus. And he didn't say a word. But she didn't stop there. She didn't turn up her nose and say, Well, this ain't the Messiah. This ain't the Son of God. This ain't the Son of David. She kept on. 
She kept on. What did she do? She got down. That word worship. She got down on her face. And worship, that word worship is prostrate. She was down on her belly, worshiping him. She, that word, the definition says she was like a dog licks his master's hand. She was down at his feet, worshiping him. And she cried out, oh, Lord, help me. Oh, Lord, help me. I tell you, that song about, Lord, help me. I can think of everything I can ask the Lord to help, help for. Boy, I tell you, there's a lot that we need help for. You know, we, we, we've got it made because we just say, oh, Lord, help me. That's all we say. Jesus Christ, he's making intercession, but what do we need help with? She was praying for her daughter to be delivered of that devil that was in her. And she was persistent. Christ said, I've come but for the lost sheep. Oh, Lord, help me. He said, why should I cast my bread before dogs? Oh, Lord, help me. Are not even the dogs worthy of the crumbs of the master's table? Her faith drove her because she knew without a shadow of a doubt that Jesus Christ would heal her daughter. But in her persistence, her faith was made manifest by her actions because she knew and Christ knew. That's why he didn't turn her away. He didn't answer her to begin with. The disciples said turn her away. He didn't turn her away. He told her while he was here. And then she worshipped him. Then he told her why that he wouldn't give her the, crumb, the, the bread from the master's table, but yet she was worthy of the crumbs. We are worthy of the crumbs by what Christ did upon that cross at Calvary. See, in this text, this woman's daughter was grievously vexed with the devil. She cried out to Jesus, O Lord, thou son of David. And he answered her not a word. She was pleading to him for her daughter. The disciples besought him, said, Lord, tell her to leave. Send her away. But he didn't. The statement that Christ made about being the, the sent to, for the lost sheep of the tribe of Israel, the house of Israel, that didn't deter her. So she had determination she worshipped him on the ground in homage. Jesus told her it's not me to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. And as she was laying there worshipping at her master's feet like a dog, she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat at the crumbs which fall from their master's table. She had unwavering faith she knew that Jesus would heal her daughter. She never gave up. Jesus said, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole. Great is thy faith. Do we have the faith that this Gentile woman had? You know, when we ask God to move in our lives, when we ask God for help, and He doesn't tend to deliver right away. We just tend to take it on our own and do things on our own. But yet, she was persistent in the fact that she knew that her help would not come from man. That her help had to come from God. She knew that. When we cry out to the Lord, help me, do we have her faith? Do we have that persistent faith that she has? persistent faith day after day faith in a living God faith in knowing that Jesus Christ came to save sinners Paul stated of whom I am chief we're all chief sinners no one knows the spirit of man save the spirit of man this woman knew that she was a Gentile this woman knew that he came for the Israel, for the house of Israel. This woman knew that he was the Son of God, but she didn't let anything that she knew deter her because she knew that he was the Messiah. 
She knew that he was the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And she knew without a shadow of a doubt, no matter what circumstances came her way, that if she put her faith in Jesus Christ and that she worshiped and she humbled herself before him, that she would receive that in which she asked and that she did. As we say, as your faith be it, so be it unto you. That's what Christ told her. She worshipped him, then she pleaded with him through faith. And by her faith, her daughter was made whole. See, she cried out to him. She came to him. He didn't answer. So what did she do? She worshipped him. And in worshipping him, she pleaded with him her cause. She pleaded with him her cause. She heard the word of God. She cried out to God. She heard the words and read. She heard what Jesus had to say to her. It wasn't what she wanted to hear, I'm sure. But it was a test of her faith. It was a test of her faith. But then what did she do? She heard what she didn't want to hear. And then she got down and she worshipped him. And said, Lord, help me. You see a picture there? We hear the Word of God. It might not be what we want to hear, but it should not deter us from worshiping God. She kept on, he kept on. He said, you're not worthy. He basically, he said, you're not worthy of this bread. But she pleaded with him, Lord. Are not even the dogs worthy of the crumbs that fall from the master's table? That's faith right there. That's faith. She pleaded with him. Do we, do we as the church, do we as Christians, do we believe that God can help us? You know where we fall short? We say that we worship God. We worship God in our own comfort. She was out of her comfort zone. Jesus Christ had came up to Tyre and said and into their land with his 12 disciples. He didn't even hear. He didn't acknowledge her to begin with. I'm sure he heard her. He knew. He went there for her. He went up there for a test of her faith and a testament to his disciples of the faith that would come from the Gentiles. Their faith. But do we believe that God can help us? We pray for things. But do we truly believe that God hears what we're praying for? We pray for each other. But in our heart, do we keep pleading with God to hear our prayers, our cry for help? So I wrote down, I said, Lord, help me. Deliver our children from the hands of Satan. Pray for that. Do you believe God can deliver the children from the hand of Satan? Amen, I do. Lord, deliver our church from the grips of the ungodly. Lord, we pray that you deliver this church that you've given us from the grips of the ungodly. Keep us unspotted from the world. Lord, help me. Lord, deliver our loved ones from the bonds of addiction. From the bonds of addictions. Lord, deliver us all from the lust of the flesh. Lord, heal the brokenhearted. Lord, help thou our unbelief. Lord, help us to walk in the light. Lord, help us to have the faith of this Canaanite woman. Lord, help us. Lord, help us all. You see, when we get to where we need help and no one else is around to help us, then would we cry out to God? Because first off, where we mess up, we rely on each other. We rely on man. We rely on ourselves instead of God. And our help comes from the Lord. It doesn't come from man. He puts people in place in this earth to help us, but for His will. 
for His will. And it's by your faith that you humble yourself and cry out to Him that He sends you that help in which we need. Only God can mend the brokenhearted. Only God can remove the devils from us, from the people, like, like He did this woman's daughter. Only God can heal this land. Only God. He is our help in time of need. But you see, where, where we get it wrong, where we get it wrong, is we just are complacent. Well, God hears us. God hears you. How, how, bad, how bad do we want our loved ones to be saved? How, how bad do we want the sick to be healed? How bad do we want godly men and women to stand up in faith and believe? By, by the signs of people at the altar, not bad enough. Because we don't humble ourselves. We don't worship the way God intends us to worship. We have not. Why? Because we ask not. God wants us to ask. God wants to help. God wants to help. But we have to be willing to humble ourselves before Him, before mankind, that He would exalt us in due time, that He, through His Word, through His grace, and through His stretched out arm, He does the helping and the exalting. It's not what I did. It's not that I gave that homeless fella $50. I helped him. No, you didn't help him. God gave you that $50 to give to him for his glory. It's not anything that we can do. We've got to get past that. It's all what God does. <clears throat> Psalms 12 and 1, David wrote, he said, Help, Lord, for the godly man ceases. For the faithful fell from among the children of men. He said, Help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth. And the faithful fell from among the children of men. <clears throat> David's crying out for help right there. Lord, help us. Lord, I pray that you help to raise up godly men. Lord, that the faithful would raise up in the church and you would be glorified. Lord, help this church. Help your church, the ones that you said that the gates of hell would not prevail against it, Lord. You said the gates of hell would not prevail against your church. So help us to stand. Help us to stand. Your word says that there will be a falling away in the latter days. Lord, we see that falling away. Help the faithful to stand up. Help the godly men to be bold. Help us to be a witness unto a lost and dying world. Lord, help us. That's what David's crying out. He said, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. For he sees the destruction that's coming. He sees the ways that people are acting. He sees the godly man have been, has been deceived. The faithful are fell, falling away. The salt of the earth is dying out. Help us, Lord, to stand. Lord, I pray that the faithful rise up among the children of men and that godly men would abound. That's my prayer. And I can say that all day long all day long. But until I truly mean that in my heart, until I truly, I get down and I believe without a shadow of a doubt that no matter what the opposition is that's coming in around me, no matter what the world says, that I can humble myself before God and believe 
that God will hear my prayer and that God will send help. Why? Because he promised us so through his words. But we have to humble ourselves. Lord, help us, just like that woman, the Canaanite woman. If we get offended by the word of God, so be it. She got, I'm sure that she was having thoughts in her mind, but her faith pushed her through. Her faith led her to victory. Her faith led her into the, into, the, into the house of God. It led her into a sonship with Christ Jesus. It led her to Jesus because she had faith, being as a Gentile, she had faith and came to him and she did not quit. She kept on. Lord, she was pleading with him. She was pleading with him as she was lying at his feet. I imagine she was in tears, crying as she was kissing his feet, worshiping him, Lord. Are not even the dogs worthy of the crumbs that fall from the master's table? Is there something there for me, Lord? Because I have faith. She had faith, brothers. She had faith. <laughs> Psalms 33, 18 through 22 says, Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear Him, upon them that hope in His mercy to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waiteth for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart shall rejoice in Him because we have trusted in His holy name. Let Thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us according as we hope in Thee. He is our help and our shield. Let Thy mercy be upon us, O Lord, according as we hope in Thee. In thee, just like Christ told that one woman, as your faith is, so be it unto you. As your hope be it, so be it unto you. You got to have faith. Christ said if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you can move mountains. You can move mountains. This woman here had mustard seed faith. Just think if we had a, a whole bundle of mustard seed faith. Your mustard seed and my mustard seed and your mustard seed and all our mustard seeds come together. What could we do? What could we do? If we're all in one body, one mind, and one accord, what could we do? If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you can move mountains. If we all had that mountain moving faith as a grain of mustard seed, what happened at the day of Pentecost? The ground shook! The ground shook. People spoke with cloven tongues. The Holy Spirit came down and God was at work at that very moment in every one of those men's lives. At that very moment. Just like this woman here, when she prayed to God, she asked Jesus Christ to heal her daughter. That very moment, her faith made her daughter whole. Her faith healed, that healed her daughter, her faith. Think about that. Think about that. What is faith? What is faith? It's a substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. She was hoping. She went to Christ in hope that he would heal her daughter. And by her persistence and pushing forward, Lord, she had humbled herself to, to the form of a dog eaten from the master's table. She could have been too good for that. But I ain't doing that. But she humbled herself to that point for out of hope 
That humility was substance of her faith. And the outcome was the evidence of God's riches and glory because God healed her daughter. She was made part of that body at that moment. How? By faith. The Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And how shall they call on Him whom they have not heard? Well, she obviously had heard about Jesus Christ. Because when He came into her land, she was seeking Him right then. And guess what? She found Him. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. You don't have faith to move mountains? Ask for it. Humble yourself and ask God to give you that faith. Ask God to give you that humble mind, that humble spirit. Ask God to put you where you need to be because if you don't and He's calling you, He'll put you there in His own time. And it's not going to be when you expect it. So if we humble ourselves before God and ask Him, Lord, to help us. I've got my faults that I need help with, Lord. I'm humbling myself before man. I say, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Even my secret faults, David said. Forgive me. We can't be too pride, proud. And we have to trust, trust the Lord. And don't never be afraid to humble yourself. Because there is help. There is help in our Savior. And help is on the way. If we just believe. If we just believe as this woman believed. So if you've got anything that you need to ask God to help you with today, then now's the time. Don't let a day pass without humbling yourself and asking God, Lord, whether it be for your children, for your nation, for your health, for, your, for whatever it is, for your walk with Jesus, ask Him to help you. Ask Him to help you. Because the church has got way too much pride in it. The church has forgot about humility. The church has forgot about its role in this world to lead others to Christ, to pray for the widows and the homeless, the fatherless. Quit praying for yourself. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Pray for the lost. Pray for this nation. Pray for Israel. Pray for peace in Jerusalem. Pray, 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 and have faith in everything that you ask for that God will fulfill it. <coughs> Any questions?